G'day and welcome back to Australia's only classic mini YouTube channel. On this episode, we are gonna be installing new rear rubber cones into Grace. So first step we need to do is jack up the car and use a quality set of axle stands like I've shown you in previous videos. Now I'm also gonna be doing a series of how-to videos. Please remember that not everyone that works on cars like you and I have the knowledge that either you or I have watching this. There might be some rookies out there all the way through to fully seasoned mechanics. So some really basic videos on how to do the most basic of things I really feel will help those people out there who don't know a lot about cars and wanna learn. So if you haven't already, make sure you check it out, how to use a jack and stands. Once she's on the jack, let's get underneath and have a look at the rear suspension. All right, so we are under the back of Grace now. As you can see here, there is the muffler. Now, I was always taught as an apprentice, do the hardest job first, that way everything from there on end is gonna be significantly easier. So if you have a look where the exhaust system runs on a classic Mini, it runs at the rear left-hand side. Some cars, they do run in the middle, depending which model you have. So we're gonna be doing this one first. Now, as you can see up here, there's not a lot of gap between uh, the subframe and the exhaust, but that's the reason why we're gonna be doing this one first. Now, because I already have, and I'll just grab this light, so, so we have a bit better view. Uh, I've already got the trumpet in there and an adjustable rod. So we're gonna loosen this rod, which is then going to bring the trumpet further away, which is then gonna enable us to remove the cone easier. All right, so I've just grabbed myself a pair of multi-grips. These are generally quite good um, to be able to get in there into those uh, tough spots and to be able to loosen off these nuts. Now, hopefully we can do it without too much drama. Okay, so now uh, the whole thing's moving. So, which means we need to lock one end and be able to turn the other. Hopefully, holding it with my hand, I can apply enough pressure to be able to hold it and then loosen the locking nut. Aha, there we go. Terrific. Now you can do this job underneath the car, but you can also do it when the subframe's out or with the wheel off. So what we're doing here is just loosening that nut the entire way. We are then going to wind the adjuster all the way in. That's going to shorten it, which is then going to give us the access we need to be able to get the cone out of there. Okay, so as we remove that, we start to get a bit of movement in the back. And that's exactly what we want to see. All right, so now it's going to come the fun part of separating the cone from the trumpet. So I'm just going to wind that in just a little bit more and then we can get a screwdriver in there and hopefully just pry it off. All right, bit of persuasion and she came out. This is also a good time. If you haven't already, make sure you check your fuel filter and see what it's like in what condition. If it's got a clear bowl like mine does, you can see straight into it. If it doesn't, it's pretty cheap to replace. So if you haven't already, make sure you get that done. Right, so this is where it becomes fun as well. Can put a rag in there just to help keep it still. But I'm just hoping I can just apply enough pressure on that and then get a screwdriver or a lever bar in here and take off the cone, or even get a pair of uh, moldy grips around the outside to try and twist it. Right, these are the biggest moldy grips I've got, and I don't think that's gonna work. All right, so screwdriver it is. Now I'll show you a really good trick in a second to help prevent this from happening. Right, so that is well and truly stuck on there. So we're gonna have to give it a bit of persuasion. All right, so I've been on this thing for at least 20 minutes between shots. I'll tell you what, this thing is just not budging, hey. I've tried everything. It's just completely stuck in here, which is frustrating as hell. <clears throat> oh my goodness, Whew. Any suggestions, guys, to be able to get the rubber cone out of the, the trumpet would be greatly appreciated. Let's come up with a solution, what we're gonna do. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna use the rip speed Hilos that I've got um, set aside for the 1275. We can replace these down the track. So all we need to do is lock this in there and then pull this rod out. And that should enable us to just swap it over into the new one. There we go. So that's just fitted on there quite easily, I think. It's either going to be easy to get it off or not. Oh, there we go, cool. So now that we've got it off, 
that is just going to slide directly, hopefully, inside here. Okay, so that's going to be a bit stiff, so we need to... Oh, there we go. So what I'm going to do there is just grab a bit of CU800 paste or copper paste, whatever you want to call it. So all we're going to do here is grab a bit of copper paste. We are just going to lather this thing in it. That way when we install it, it'll help go in easier, but also help the removal process down the track if we ever get to pull it out again. So that's in there. Cool. So see how I applied the grease at the end of the shaft and then now it's moved all the way down. That's exactly what you want to do. You don't want to cover the entire thing in there, otherwise you're pretty much just wasting it. So we're going to make this as short as we possibly can. That way when you get it back in, it's going to help it uh, going a bit easier. So guys, I do have an Instagram account as well. So if you don't already, make sure you follow me there as well. I do post a lot of stuff that's behind the scenes for my channel, a lot of photos and updates that I do. Now, one of the guys reached out, it was either through Instagram or uh, through my channel, um, and he said, apply a little bit of copper paste around the outside of the ceiling uh, ring just here for the trumpet. Now, this will help to prevent the trumpet sticking to the cone like this one. So we're going to throw that straight in the bin. A bit annoying. Uh, that was the original one that I bought probably about four or five years ago, but you know, it is what it is. So the type of cone we're using once again is a red dot cone. We're just going to slide that directly on the end and that's pretty much it. So you can look like Statue of Liberty if you want, standing like this. Or you can just simply put it in the car. So that's what we're going to do. We'll reinstall the passenger side, then we'll jump onto the driver side. Installation is the reverse of removal. First thing we're going to do is just slide the trumpet in there with the rod. Slide that right down to the very end. That's just going to give us max amount of room to be able to get the cone in there. So slide it down there. Oh, trying to get the grease everywhere. And then once you got that in, slide the new cone in, seat it right up against the back of the subframe. And if you haven't already, you can just remove the sticker. Grab the trumpet, line the trumpet up. Now, once it's in there, we then need to put the ball joint in at the opposite end of the shaft. All right, so because we've got the ball joint out, if you're not gonna be replacing it, make sure you service it and replace the rubber boot if you need to and put a bit of grease in there as well, just to help it realign back up in there and do its job of pivoting without doing any damage. Now, comes the fun part, is to line up the trumpet with the cone. Make sure the cone is situated all the way back in there. And then align the ball joint with the trumpet rod. All right, so once it's all lined up, and you're all Mickey Mouse, you can then readjust this end. Now comes the fun part winding out the rod on the shaft and lengthening it so you can get your adjustment back. So there we go. So all I'm doing is just holding the rod and just turning the trumpet itself. We'll just get as close as we can to touching the rubber cone. All right, so once it gets close and you're happy with it, just let it sit where it's gonna naturally wanna sit. Make sure the cone is also seated in the back of the subframe in the right position before you start going ham on it. Okay, so essentially all I'm doing here, turning the trumpet as far as it'll go by hand and then leaving it at that. So there is a bit of play there and that's fine. That's just gonna readjust itself uh, once it settles in. And then if it doesn't, then we can just adjust it down the track. Now you're only gonna get so much adjustment out of here as well. So adjust it to its full extension, let it sit on the ground. Once again, go for a bit of a drive. Once you've done a couple hundred Ks, come back and reassess the right height and then uh, retension it and reset the height if you're unhappy with it. So that's pretty much sitting there. Essentially the rubber cone is not gonna be able to fall out when uh, the car's jacked up off the ground because that cone can't move from the back of the seat just here. So it's gonna sit in there nice and fine. Even if it does move around a little bit, it's never gonna move enough where it's gonna actually dislodge itself so long as you've lengthened the rod as long as you possibly can. So once you're happy with that and the length of it, you can then go and tighten up the locking nut, this one here. And like I've said in previous videos, you can get special tools to be able to do this, but if you have some stuff at home, some old spanners and shifters and stuff, you can certainly do it just with those. It'll certainly do the job. All right, so the awkward moment when you realize that the um, passenger side is actually easier than the driver side because of the battery box. 
So let's see if we can get some um, room in here. Let me just turn the camera and just have a look. Yeah, that's the kind of room we're working with. If not, that's okay. What we can do is just take the wheel off on the uh, driver's side and then we can do it from the wheel arch there because there's not a lot of room to be able to get the stuff out. Let's give it a go and see how we travel with it. Excellent. So that nut was just nipped up. That's perfect. So once again, I'm just gonna wind the adjuster bolt all the way in. Let's be able to get it off the ball joint. Then we remove the arm, the cone, the trumpet, everything. Pull it apart and replace it. Sometimes even, aha, uh -huh, might be able to get lucky here. Sometimes you can just remove it from the trumpet end itself. So this bit here, by winding it in far enough, hopefully that's still loose, yeah. Um, out of the end of the extension for the trumpet, which might actually do us a bit of justice. Right, actually change of plan, that is not gonna work because the uh, length of this rod is longer at the trumpet end than what it is at the ball joint end. So we're gonna have to take it out of the ball joint, which I'm pretty sure it just came out then. And then that should be enough for us to be able to wiggle everything and be able to get it out. Aha. Uh -huh. Right, so the whole thing just came out then. That's perfect. Pull the rod out with the ball joint. All right, so you know what it just worked out? Is I need to take the wheel off to be able to undo the shock from the bottom and from the top nut, remove the shock to be able to get the cone out. So let me demonstrate as to why. So currently that's where the spring resides because the trumpet is stuck to it. I need to remove the shock. The shock is a little bit, a little bit fiddly to be able to get out, but I need to undo the top nut under the bottom nut, slide it off, which then the arm will drop down, which then I can get the cone out. So, fun times. Now normally you probably wouldn't have to do this, but because the trumpet is stuck to the arm, and that's not the right spanner, um, I have to remove the shock to be able to get this out. Normally you could just separate the rubber cone from the trumpet, and then you'd be able to pull it straight out, slide it back in, done, Bob's your uncle or Bob's your auntie. With this, I can't. So even if I try and separate it, I'm pretty certain it's not gonna come off. And to be honest, I don't like giving up on things in life. I like to really persevere and give a lot of things, everything that I have. But some things in life, like this, it's not worth trying to sit there for three and a half hours trying to remove the cone and the trumpet just to be able to get it out. If it's not working, there's generally an easier way to do it or to ask for help. All right, so remove the nut. Should be a flat washer there as well. Now I don't think from memory I can take that out uh, because of the length of the um, shaft that the, the shock is on. All right, so what I'm gonna have to do now is loosen the top nut inside the boot and take the top part of the shock out to be able to get the shock out completely. And my boot's locked, great. All right, take two, let's find the right key. Let's get this boot open, yes. I know my hands are absolutely filthy, I don't like getting dirty, so I'm a bit annoyed that I'm as dirty as I am. Now I really need to get a seal um, locking kit to put on here because this seal is completely loose. All right, so just here is the nut we need to be undoing for the top of the shock. Now, it is important that when you loosen these that you support the shaft here with another spanner. So it could just be a spanner or a set of moldy grips or vice grips, whatever. The reason why is, and this is Tomo's tech tip, is to support the center shaft while undoing the nut. The reason why that is, is if you turn the entire thing, at the bottom of the shock, there is a seal that seals it from all the oil and the pressure inside the shock from coming out. If you start turning this, the whole shaft turns, you can then run the risk that you're gonna leak the seal down below, which is then gonna cause a shock to leak, which is then gonna cause premature fade and wear of the shock absorber and not activate it properly. So, moving forward, support the inside shaft whilst undoing the nut. So I'm gonna cheat and just use a pair of combination pliers. That'll be suffice. Also when doing this job, you should never use air tools on this sort of thing because you do also run the risk of damaging it as well. Take that nut off. All right, so take the washer off with it. 
will also be a bush. So you, these bushes are replaceable, actually. They look like they need to be done. Oh my goodness. I've definitely seen better days. Anyway, we can do those on another episode. So once you've done that, I'll grab the torch and the camera. Okay, so now we come back to here. We can lower the shock down and we should be able to compress it far enough where we can move it down and then remove the cone. All right, so what I've done is grab the shock vertically. I've molded it to go all the way down around here. That way it's laying down. I've dropped the arm down and then grab the old one and send it straight to the bin. Well, I'm not gonna bore you with the reinstallation process because it is the reverse of removal. So let's get to finishing this thing, get it back on the ground and see what it looks like. All right, here's another one of Tomo's tech tips. Why you got this apart before you put it back together? Because everything is lined up in there, ready to go. Nip this lock nut up. That way it'll just save you sticking your pliers or um, tools through this little opening at the back here. Trying to get it from in front of the battery box. Do it up now whilst you've got access to it. Always make sure that this drain plug is facing the bottom as well. That way any debris that gets inside there, it is able to drain out. All right, so like I've said on previous episodes, it is always a good idea to mark the bolts with colored texture or chalk, just to make sure that you know that you've done particular items up, especially suspension components like that. So quick costume change, a trim of the beard and a haircut as well. I'm gonna take Grace to work tomorrow and see how she performs on the road now that we've got all four brand new cones in the car so we can get a real understanding of how this thing should actually handle with good suspension. All right, so once you've carried out the hub to yard measurements on both sides after letting it down, always ensure that they're fairly close, if not similar in size. If one side is 20 mil higher or 20 mil lower than the other, it's worthwhile adjusting it now and getting it to where it needs to be. Now remember, the suspension needs to settle in. So if you don't let it settle in and you keep readjusting it before it properly settles in, you give it 500 kilometers, 1,000, 2,000, whatever it may be, it'll finally find its eventual ride height and then the heights will be all over the place. So adjust it to where you need to be. This is 10 mil different from driver's side to passenger side, which isn't that much of a big deal, but I'll probably just tinker with it and just bring it down just a little bit and then drive it and see how it goes. Once I've done a couple of Ks in it and done a couple of runs, I will then go back, reassess where it needs to be and readjust accordingly. All right, g'day and welcome back. So the first drive after fitting the rear cones to the car. So things are running quite smoothly. I can't believe that I didn't do this mod earlier. And to anyone out there watching who is looking to upgrade their suspension, replacing the rubber cones is a vital component of any suspension system in a classic Mini. So like with the front, I was dumbfounded by the improvement that I saw with the upgrade. Now that I've done the rear, I'm just as happy. Guys, when you are modifying cars, you have three options. Drivability, tire wear, or clearance. You can only choose two of those three options. You cannot have all three and have the thing driving perfect. You can't have big tires, it drives down the road nicely, and it steers well. As you raise a car, or even lower a car, the geometry changes, which means you're not gonna be have the best of all the possibilities available too, unless you go right out of your way and you spend the money and really invest it in the time and the products to be able to make it drive safe. But generally out of the three options available, you can only choose two. So although it still rides a little stiff, a little bouncy, I do have the upgraded springs in there and the adjustable shock absorbers as well. Shock absorbers are one thing that if they are adjustable, you really need to dial it in and figure out where it is that you need to be when you're driving the car. If you're doing track days and you want to get a little bit more performance out of it, by any means stiffen them up. If you're driving on a daily basis and long trips, you probably want it to be a little bit softer. So you just have to find that happy medium. There's no real setting or uh, base setting that you need it to be at in order for it to drive really well. So keep that in mind when you're modifying cars. But generally, once you adjust it, you don't need to keep readjusting it. Well, like always, guys, thanks for watching. We've got another episode coming up. I did find a little bit of movement in the rear axle, so we got to figure that out. But that'll be on another episode. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you right here on another episode of Thomas Tune-Ups.